Hello, and today we're going to be basically going over the interface of um, mCrater. So there's a few new features um, since, well, at least I started uh, using it, and I've been using it for, well, on and off for a number, well, I would say pretty much since it's, um, since it was posted on Minecraft forums, so. Um, so, some of the new features are, um, basically they had a, um, this console thing here connected to the uh, program and, um, no longer it's connected, it's movable and it generally spawns right, right where it is now, but you can move it. The second new thing is um, you can basically make a checklist, so you can create tasks that you need to get done. So task one, and you can also set the priority, so you can set it to high, medium, or low. Um, you can complete it, so it's a nice little feature, just to give you that like extra inspiration of getting something done. Um, Let's see, it basically tells you what's in the news, uh, gives you a mod of the week, and they do update that. And the last thing that, well, I don't know if it's the last thing. No, not the last thing, never mind. Um, the other thing, one of the other things is uh, workspaces now. So you can have work on multiple mods all at once. So. Um, the other thing that they added was um, you can make audio now, so sounds, um, records, and uh, ab absence music or ambience. I think it's ambience. Um, like things that are in the background, such as trees and wind and stuff like that. Um, they kept the um, MC skin feature, and now you're able to um, basically import your texture and stuff. So textures that you create from on your Paint.net or Paint or whatever you use. Um, they added animation textures as well, so if you need to make an animation texture, I didn't realize this, I'm working on a texture pack actually, and this is it's pretty handy. I, I wonder if it's even possible if I can use it for my texture pack or not. Probably is. But, um, armor textures and import armor textures, so you can also import from a texture files. At least I think that's it. Yep, so basically you choose your top file and your bottom file and they have to have the um, underscore layers underscore one and the same for number two. Top being two over here where I have no idea what those possibly are. I've never been great with figuring out how it's all been laid out. I haven't done it so <laughs> I don't know. Um, I do know that's a chest plate, that's the boots, um, that I have no idea, and that's a helmet, and I guess that would be the leggings, possibly, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> who knows. Um, anyways, um, the other thing is the animation software, I haven't played around with this, but um, you can add frames and stuff like that. Um, what else? Basically their program, why is this showing up blank? Maybe it's just loading. Loading Pilo Sync API. Hmm. All right. Let's see what it does.
I'm gonna pause it here and see if it does anything. All right, so I'm back. I just restarted the program, and um, this is basically their built-in program for textures and stuff. Um, how it works is you would select a texture. So if you're doing a block, you want a square texture. If you're doing something like a gem or something, you would use. Well, let's take a. <laughs> Let's do this instead. And scroll down to record again. I thought I saw it. Nope. It's way down here. Where is it? Nope, past it. There we go. Alright, so now we have our record thingy. And what you would do is you um, change it, and you can see that right there. If I zoom in, uh, you can scroll your mouse. Um, I think it's your mouse button, and you can zoom in the texture. Um, basically, I changed the color of it, so. That's kind of a handy feature if you want to do it their way, or if you were to import a item or block texture, you can select it from your desktop or wherever you're holding it. Um, the next thing is your toolbox. Your toolbox has a bunch of things. Um, reset all windows. I believe set resets the position of the windows. I'm not entire. Yeah, resets the position of the windows. It's um, it will load where you place them the last. So if I were to close it now, it would um, remember where it is on my screen. Um, advanced mode. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't played around with this, but we'll find out in a second. Doesn't look any different. <laughs> um, hmm. Well, it seems to not be any different. Um, could be something different. Who knows? Anyways, um, you can in export your workspace um, so you can import it and work on it in future or you can export it to Eclipse you can rename your current workspace so if I were to call it uh, my mod tutorial so and then rename it and then it's going to be that um, that's just a better well, interface, obviously. I don't know. Not much to do. Um, create a smelting recipe. This is a handy little tool that will allow you to um, create recipes that you make for your mods and stuff. Sometimes um, you will want to um, create a recipe. So, say... Just for an example, All right, and say you were making a stronger next tier of a diamond pick, although that would probably be diamond as well. Let's just export it and and there we go. We have a crafting um, crafting recipe and that's what it will look like.
Um, not much to say about that. <laughs> uh, you can also do smelting recipes as well. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, it's just a quick one. Oh, um, you can restart or well, there's recompiling, which basically um, tests if for bugs, I guess. Um, I really have no idea what the hell recompiling is actually meant for, but <laughs> basically checks everything. That's what it does in a console. So I'm guessing it's just checking for bugs and if there's any errors. Um, export to local Minecraft. You can basically export it if you have Forge. The Forge of what version mcrader Minecraft is for. So this version is for 1.7.10 so you would need Forge 1.7.10 installed on your Minecraft which means you need Minecraft 1.7.10 in order to install Forge. And um, then you would just export it to your Minecraft and it would install it for you. Um, and then you can also, I think, remove it as well. Uh, last thing is um, launch, relaunch mCreator. So basically it will do what it says, it will re relaunch it. So if I were to do this, sometimes it gets a little bit laggy and hogs a lot of the FPS so you might want to relaunch it and that usually fix the bugs. Um, sometimes it will go over there. It's not always... I think it's only um, only stays where it's supposed to if it's um, closed and restarted. Um, okay, last thing that I probably should cover is, um, recompile, no, I covered that, um, factory reset. This is going to wipe all your mods out. It's going to wipe your textures out, it's going to wipe everything out. So unless you want to get rid of your mod and clean your workspace up. Um, don't press this little exclamation box here. <laughs> it will um, remove everything. Um, won't save your workspaces and anything unless you have them backed up, which is probably a good reason to export your workspaces. Extensions. Um, MC Skin 3D and I think that's built in, pretty sure. thought it was, maybe, is, yep, it is. Alright, so, um, I don't really use this, so I don't know if I can cover anything. It's, um, Dear God. <laughs> yeah, um, don't use it at all. Anyways, at least I don't. You can, if you know how to. Oh. Alrighty then. Um, anyways, I'm not going to cover that because I don't know how to use it. And, um, so this button right here, you can start, um, server test environment and start, um, Minecraft test environment, so if you want to test it on a server and see if it works alright, you can test it on a server that you can run on your computer, or if you are wanting to test a client, then you can test client. And the last thing here is um, exporting your mod to um, a zip file, or if you have it set up to do a jar, you can do it a jar as well. But um, 
its default is a zip first time you use it. Um, you basically just type your name in and for your mod and hit save and then there will be another page that just do that. There will be this page that shows up and you want to change that to jar for the next time you use it. Um, it doesn't work if you type dot jar in because it will just turn it back to um, dot zip. Um, select mods to export. You can choose the um, mods you want to export that will do after you click that button. Um, mod image, you can choose a mod image. Um, author, so you would put your whatever you want, your real name, Minecraft name, probably safer to put your Minecraft name. Um, description, what your description is. Version, um, uh, it has to be basically three digits, so say 2.5 or something like that. Your mod name, no. Mm, no spaces and um, letters only, so that's basically all there is to it. Um, that's it, that's the um, GUI. Um, workspace, actually I forgot. Don't know how to use... oof. Herbal editor. Um, don't know how to use that or that, but those are the things that are um, I don't know. A variable is something. <laughs> um, I don't know much coding, so. Uh, when bone meal is used. Phil's bucket. These ones are um, ones I've never actually seen before. Good to know. Anyways, um, those you can experiment with. Um, what we were just in our events. Um, I'll cover that in a way later tutorial. Um, now you can export your mod through here as well and it'll do the same thing. You can edit your elements. And I'll get into that when um, we do some modding with our blocks and stuff. Um, preferably 3D models. Uh, view source if you know how to code and stuff you can view the source of it, publish to the community, and delete all will delete all your mods. This will delete only the selected mod. And um, that's all for there. Preferences. Um, I really wouldn't mess around with any of this because it's um, not needed to be altered. Um, so yeah, um, that's it. Uh, that's the basic interface and I thought it would just be a good one to um, follow up on and uh, so you kind of know what you're doing. Um, if you like my tutorials, like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.